Hubert, Bonner, Greg, and Harper. It's the Knicks. Tell me a little something, KD. Don't you regret not coming to the Knicks. Don't you regret not What's going on guys, it's your boy Big Hero Grizz back at you with another one. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, give me a thumbs up, ring the notification bell, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on TikTok, hit me up in the community post, man, you already know the vibes. And this is a very special video because it's a time for celebration in more ways than one. First things first, I finally got to a big goal of mine, a big milestone for me. I'm finally over 2,000 subscribers, man. Thank you guys so, so, so much for your continued love and support, man. <sighs> it really means a lot to me. I say this every time I hit like any type of milestone for this channel, but you know, it just really means a lot to me that you guys continue to show up and show up for my videos and just show me all the love and support, man. I'm gonna keep doing my thing, keep making this content, make, making this art, you know what I'm saying? And there's another reason for the celebration, man. We have a new Ring of Honor champion. Eddie Kingston finally did it. He finally won the big one. He finally finished his story. Another person finishing their story before Cody Rose, man. That kind of sucks for Cody. But it's great for Eddie, man. Eddie doing the damn thing in New York of all places. He defeated Claudio Castagnoli. He's the new Ring of Honor champion. And the match between Claudio and Eddie was pretty dope. It was heavy hitting, man, hard hitting. There was a whole bunch of sh chops and slaps and punches to the face. And I'm kind of mad that Eddie didn't come out wearing a Knicks jersey or wearing some tans. But you know, that's neither here nor there, man. Because Eddie Kingston is your new Ring of Honor World Champion slash New Japan Open Weight Champion. Double Champion, Two Belt Jones for Eddie Kingston, man. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. And I gotta say, the crowd was hot for Eddie. The stage, like the way they, um, AEW had the staging setup was pretty dope. It was just an amazing atmosphere. Um, AEW came around and they were able to sell more tickets because of marketing. They were actually doing something smart and marketing the fact that they had a wrestling show tonight. So who would have thought that marketing would be the key to getting more tickets? Who would have thunk it? After the match, you cut to a pre-tape at a local medical facility. You have Roderick Strong in the kingdom. He still has a neck brace on. He has his goofy looking glasses. And there was a fine behind nurse there by the name of Tierra James. And I'm like, yo, is, is that hospital hiring? Because I work in healthcare and I want to work where she's working. But yeah, man, you have Roderick Strong. You know, he's looking pathetic. Adam Cole, he shows up to show love to his friend, and um, the kingdom they're making, they're continuing to make um Adam Cole feel bad for the neck health of Roderick Strong. You know what I mean? So the kingdom leave because they have to get ready for their match this Friday on Rampage. This is gonna be a fatal four-way tag team match to determine who will be the number one contenders for Adam Cole and MJF at Wrestle Dream. And then Adam Cole says, "Listen, I hate to do this to you, but I gotta go too because MJF has his main event match, and I gotta go for that." And and Roddy's like. Ugh. Don't leave me, Adam. I can't see you. And it's like, dude, open your eyes. I'm right here. <laughs> so Roger Strong, he's 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 growing on me. He's one of the best things on Dynamite. One of the best things in AEW. With his continued neck health issues, you know what I'm saying? Happy Neck Health Awareness Month to all those who celebrate. After this, we cut to Christian and Luchasaurus. They're talking to Renee. And Christian pretty much lays out the challenge that this Saturday on Collision is going to be a handicap. I mean, a triple threat match between Christian, Luchasaurus, and Darby Allen. The condition being Sting is not allowed at ringside. So you have the tag team match between Sting and Darby and Christian and Luchasaurus this Friday. Then you have the trip, the triple threat match this the triple threat match this Saturday on um, Collision for the AEW TNT Championship. And you know. Who knows? We might see some surprises. We might see some shenanigans. We might see a new champion. Hopefully not because Christian is the greatest TNT champion ever. And he's also the father of the year. So, you know, good for Christian Cage. So next up, we have a history making, quote unquote, first time ever match between Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. And I said this in my predictions video for um, Grand Slam that I didn't necessarily care for the build to this match. But the match itself did deliver. You know, you had Chris Jericho come out first. The people were singing Judas. Then you had Sammy Guevara come out. And he had um, Montezzi performing his um, theme. That's, um, I think that's Swerve's brother. So he did a live performance for um, Sammy Guevara's theme. And this match was actually pretty good. It was a whole lot better than the build allowed it to be. You know what I mean? 
there was moon sauce and Flanders, Spanish flies and cutters off the top rope and cold breakers and the way this match ended was Sammy Guevara hit Chris Jericho with a GTH and realistically you would have thought that Sammy Guevara would have pinned him right there and he would have won the match but Sammy went up to the top rope he looked like he was going for the shooting star press and Chris Jericho hit this man with a cold breaker out of nowhere like like he's on some Randy Orton type shit it was real cool how Chris Jericho hit the move it was like it was clean as a whistle clean as a sheet and I'm like yo that was pretty dope and then after the match, you know, you have Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara celebrating. They're hugging. It looks like, you know, they're going to continue with sex, God. But that wasn't necessarily the case because you had Sammy Guevara turn heel and hit Chris Jericho with a low blow. Shades of Chris Jericho and Shawn Michaels from WrestleMania 19. So you kind of figure that something big was going to happen. But what I didn't expect to happen was, um, was Sammy Guevara turning heel and then essentially joining the Don Callis family. Because after this, you had Don Callis come out, and he's with Sammy Guevara, and they leave together. So, now you have Takesha and Sammy Guevara as part of the Don Callis family. And after the match, you have Renee trying to ask questions, trying to figure this thing out. And Don Callis is like, listen, we'll talk about this on Rampage this Friday. And as Don Callis and Sammy Guevara are leaving, you have Daniel Garcia come out. And he's kind of looking confused, like, yo, what are you doing? And um, it looked like Sammy was about to get in, um, in Dan Garcia's face, but Don Callis stopped and he said, nah, 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 the kid's money. So now it's kind of like you have Don, Don Callis with Sammy and Takeshita with the possibility of Daniel Garcia joining the group, or maybe not. Maybe they're on some Judgment Day, Jay Uso type shit or whatever, but you know, very good match, very dope outcome, you know what I mean? So after this, it cuts to a pre-tape with Adam Cole and MJF arriving. MJF is trying to talk on a little trash about Samoa Joe. But as this is happening, Adam Cole gets a call from Roderick Strong. <laughs> and I don't know what Roddy was saying to Adam Cole, but Adam Cole is like, listen, Roddy, you're not going to die. And he kind of leaves MJF high and dry. And after this, you have John Mosley versus Ray Phoenix for the International Championship. And this kind of didn't go how I, how I was thinking it was going to go. And I feel like a lot of people were feeling that feeling the same way as well. The match itself was fine. You had um, John Moxley hitting curb stomps on Ray Phoenix. The crowd was singing um, Seth Rollins theme song. <laughs> and um, every time Ray Phoenix would go for like a lucha type move, John Moxley would just counter it by just like punching him in the face or just pushing him off the the um, barricade or whatever. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. And how this match ended was i forget what what the name of the move that um ray phoenix hit it looked like the um rikishi driver that rikishi used to do um he hit it on john mosley and he went for the one the two and i'm thinking he was that john mosley was supposed to kick out but it looked like john was kind of knocked out and he didn't kick out so the referee kind of like said one two and he kind of messed up the count so ray phoenix hit the driver again one two three John, John Moxley loses and Ray Phoenix is the new international champion and on one hand it's cool because you know Ray Phoenix gets some singles gold but on the other hand it's kind of like I don't really think that's how that was supposed to go maybe or maybe not and you're kind of worried about John Moxley now I was checking Twitter to see what people were saying and people that were there were saying that John Moxley walked out and even when they came back from a commercial um, Excalibur said the same thing that John Moxley was able to walk out on his own power so that's a good sign maybe maybe John Moxley was just knocked out and just not loopy and wasn't able to kick out and they just swerved and hit an, and called an audible and Ray Phoenix I, I don't know but Ray Phoenix is the new international champion so that's a pretty good look man good for Ray Phoenix one of my favorite wrestlers Animal Zero Miano Speaking of new champions, we do not have a new AEW Women's Champion as far as Saray and Tony Storm goes, but the match itself was fine. Um, Tony Storm has a new entrance, she has a new theme, she um like the um the the the, the background was kind of like black and white to match her like her old school um Starlight gimmick, and Tony Storm is probably one of the best things going in AEW right now. Um, Tony Storm was beating up Ruby Soho with shoes and the crowd was chanting for shoes and that was pretty funny. But like I said, man, um, Tony Storm wasn't able to win. She kissed Soraya, which, hey, I wasn't too mad at that. That was a pretty nice visual. But that wasn't enough for Tony Storm to beat old Soraya. And a lot of people were expecting, you know, a big surprise or whatever. 
I wasn't like listen. I I didn't think that Mercedes Monet was gonna show up. Like you, you fooled me once. You like you got me this this January thinking that Mercedes was gonna show up and she didn't. So I, I wasn't expecting the, um, the same thing to happen for this match. But it was a solid match. Soraya is still your own um, AEW Women's Champion, so good for her. Speaking of still your champion, we cut to the main event: Samoa Joe, MJF, and this was a dope match. This this did not um bode well for any advocates for neck health awareness because Samoa Joe was whooping MJF's ass like he was hitting pile drivers on the exposed concrete he was hitting this man on the hardest part of the ring the ring apron and I'm like yo there's no way MJF can survive this but MJF kept his promise man he was able to choke out Samoa Joe even though it was due to shenanigans he did the old I'm gonna choke you out with some um with his uh his wrist tape Adam Cole showed up, but I have nowhere to show his support for MJF. And it looked like Adam Cole kind of tweaked his knee because, like, or his ankle because the way he ran off the ramp and jumped down, like, he landed on an awkward, awkward position. And he was limping after this. So hopefully, Adam Cole will be okay. MJF won due to shenanigans. And it looked like Samoa Joe was going to, like, do some more damage after the match. But he didn't. He, he showed the ultimate sign of respect for MJF. They shook hands. And that's how the, the match ended, man. That's how the show ended. Samoa Joe shook MJF's hand. Adam Cole and MJF were celebrating. No big debut, no big return, no surprise, no heel turn. And like I said, this Friday on Rampage, you have the Fatal 4-Way to see who will wrestle MJF and Adam Cole at Wrestle Dream. So there's that. Overall, man, Grand Slam was a solid show. It was fun, entertaining, man. The setup was cool, the staging was cool, the crowd was hot, it's New York all day, baby. Eddie Kingston's the new Ring of Honor champion. I ain't even mad at it. I put that on my chopped cheese, my bacon, egg, and cheese, and my Tim's and the Yankees, man. This is gonna be a it it was an overall good Wednesday for me. <sighs> yeah, man, but let me know what you guys think of this episode of Dump Dynamite or Grand Slam against the honorary W man. Let me know your thoughts on the show in the comment section below. Of course, as always, like, comment, subscribe. You guys take care. Be easy. I'm out. Peace.